This is my 2018 Honda Go Wing Tour DCT airbag, of which I previously installed the optional puddle lights. Today, I'm going to show you how to enhance those puddle lights by installing lights on the front and rear of the motorcycle, increasing visibility around the motorcycle. off, touch the button, and area the lights up, and turn it back off, see what happens. Area behind the side of the motorcycle, there's light coming from the bike. So you're in the dark, you'll be able to see in this area. I bought a set of Alpina Flex LED 8 inch strips, which are actually two 4 inch LED strips that I think will be, uh, suit my purpose nicely for the sake of uh, augmenting my portal lights on my 2018 Gold Wing. The first thing we'll have to do is remove the seat. And you do that by opening up the side panels on both sides and a bolt underneath the seat. So as I've mentioned, and as you've seen in the other videos, you first start by taking this cover off after you open the side panel. So you start from the back, but there's a little lip there that goes into the notch on this panel. So you need to start from the back, pull it out, pull it up, and you pull it out like that. And it comes out like this. And you can set this somewhere where it won't get scratched. With a six millimeter hex head wrench, you take the boots out on both sides. As I said before, some might be a little tougher for others. Some spin around here. Make sure you retain the washer that that boat is contains for the seat. Most people will place a piece of uh, protective tape here and there to protect your paint from these pile of nylon boats under here. But I just don't just cover with my hand and move the seat forward. I should put it forward. Before you attempt to remove the seat, you need to disconnect this connector here for, this, for the um, heated seat wiring harness, which is located in the back of that right side panel. So what I can do is click on the click tab and pull it straight up. It, it gives you a close up of what we're talking about. This connector right here. Just push firmly on this tab behind it, that facing the interior of the motorcycle, and pull it up. Now your seat connector is disconnected. Now you're ready to pull the seat off. Make sure it's clear. Just give you an overall area picture of the areas we're gonna be working in. We're gonna be moving these clips along here, as well as these screws and clips up this way so we can get off the sides, these sides of the trunk so we can work on the other end of the motorcycle. Don't forget the screws along this back wall here. There's three of them. 
Now you need to remove these GIS screws along the top of this panel on the right hand side. Keep in mind there's one right here in this corner. And then we remove the clips at the bottom of the floor. This screw right here at the very back behind the seat because this comes off as one unit. So you have to take this screw out as well. One area I like to caution you on, um, I don't know if you can see it, but underneath here, these panels fit into grooves underneath the other panels. And over here, the last time I came in, that panel was actually off. So make sure when you put this back on that this is all the way down and that becomes flush with that. That's the one thing to keep in mind for when you're putting this back together. Also remove these screws, in this case, because I had a DCT um, airbag, my um, iPod holder is back here. So you need to take these screws out so you'll be able to take this one screw out over here to access that panel. To take this back tail end piece off here, you take those screws out, as I mentioned before, and you spread these open like that, and you'll see the back screws here. One down here a little further out in the inner part, and it's the same thing on the other side. What you do is remove these screws with your JIS screwdriver. Be careful with the last screws coming out because this panel is now free. to the inside and as I already did his connector here that's to the latching mechanism picks that pull it out and it pulls out just like that make sure to clean this area that we're going to stick this light to with rubbing alcohol to ensure a better stitch and alcohol I'm going to wipe this area off Make sure there's no wax or something to keep it from sticking. Now you can go ahead and cut off the battery supply for the tester, these lights. Just gonna make a couple of snips here and there and we'll expand the wire. You can cut these wires at the end where they branch off into the battery, run right along in this way. That should give you enough to do most of what you need to do. If not, you have to add wires to it to reach our source of uh, electrical supply. When you're done cleaning this area off, take one of your lights that you plan on using and just see what's a good place for it to put it. I think you need to put it further towards near the button because they give more light beyond the rear fender of the motorcycle. So we're gonna prepare that area for sticking it on. We also would drill a hole through this for the wires to pass through. Since I'm gonna be running around wires up the left side of the motorcycle, I'm gonna put the, the wires where when I drill a hole, it will be on the left side of this uh, bottom of the trunk cover. So that's what it will look like when it's done. And I should have laid it up beforehand to share what, what it would look like. But the point is it does not interfere with the button in this location or anything else. Place the light about three quarter of an inch from the bottom edge of the button. Use this cut line to center your light on that button. And this is where we will place the button. I'm gonna drill a hole right here for the wires to go through. So from the rear, you won't be able to see where that wire is going in. It's gonna be going straight in. So I'm gonna mark the hole first by placing a mark right there at the edge where that wire can go in. I'll put the wire through and then I'll remove the adhesive and stick it right there. You probably can't, you probably can't see it, but I'll place a little bit of drill bit uh, mark right there where my wires will go in. I'll drill the hole right there on that mark, right there on that mark with a 764th inch drill bit. There you have it. I drilled a nice little hole right here. 
nice and neat. And we'll be able to put our wires down through there. We start by putting our wires down in this hole. That's why I made the smallest hole possible so the wires will actually serve as a seal from the outside, even though I plan on putting some sealant on there as well. So you put the first wire in, and you put the second one in as well. It took me a second to get both wires through, but now that you got them both through, just put it on through the hole. Okay, you get it down flush. Where now, all you have is that to go on. And once I get it all the way in, it'll be down flat all the way. You'll see. And you can see the importance of having the black background LED lights versus the white ones. Now you can see this is matching in pretty well. And the wires through. I put a little bit, a drop of sealant on that after I finish. But in the meantime, see my alignment still, as I mentioned before, I'm gonna lift this up, pull off the plastic strip, and evenly lay this down. Make sure it's parallel with the top. Put a little dab of sealant on where the wire comes through the small hole to make sure it's uh, more watertight even though in here, I don't think we need to worry about it. But just set it in there and make sure you push it into the hole. After the screws have been removed from the back, all you gotta do is get this panel here and lift it up, down, and out. And that's how we're gonna run the wires from the back to the end, underneath the seat, right through the back of here. You, if you get a little light, you'll be able to see that you can see all the way through there. And right down in there, you can see to the back. After your sealant has had a chance to dry, you'll be able to now take the little wire and we're gonna put it up right above that little serial module there. You probably can't see the opening, but there's actually an opening. If you look back and forth, you'll see it goes underneath the seat. So that's where we're gonna put the wire. So I'm gonna diligently push this wire it goes through to the other side. All the way through. I'll be able to grab it from the other side. And then, from there, we'll move this up into place so we can put it back, put this piece back on here. And all you gotta do is spread these two wings open and put it back against the screws of which we had worked with before back and pull it out the other end like such. Like I said, went above the serial box and put it into here. I'm gonna tie this off for a minute to keep from pulling this back out when I go back to secure that panel. I'm just gonna wrap this around here. Our next goal is to go ahead and prepare a, a connector to the lights that's wired onto the back of this panel. We're gonna start by adding a connector from the wire we have right there that goes underneath the seat. I had a set of Deutsch waterproof connectors that I installed on my connection to my rear light as well as the connection to the front light. I'll show you how I installed those later. Note. It's very important that you don't forget to hook up the electrical connector for your switch back onto this position right here. If not, you have trouble opening your trunk later on. So re reattach this connector before you close this thing up. You just push on. Firmly connected. Now you can continue to put it again. And going back in, it's the same thing. Open these up. Put that in. Make sure this top of this is over this little lip right here. You'll see it on there. And then line up with the screws. Put the screws back in. Close these back off. Make sure the bottom's in like I mentioned before. And you can put it back together again. 
for test purposes, this is the light you'll get when it's installed. This is the back of the motorcycle. We're gonna start by removing the deflector panel on both sides. There's two screws, one here and one there, that we must remove. Then you have to remove this panel by starting at the bottom by pulling this out like such. You just twist it, this forward edge towards you, and keep on twisting towards you, and they'll come out. They'll be kind of noisy, but they'll come out. There, it's out. The next thing you have to remove is a body clip that I've already taken out, but goes right there in this hole that you'll see once you take that panel off. So a body clip there comes off, out. I'm gonna show you how to do this on one side of the bike, and you can do the same for the right side of the bike. The next thing we have to do is remove the mirror. You do that by pulling this thing all the way back like that, and then we remove this panel. But there's a screw right beneath there. All you have to do is reach up with the five millimeter wrench, unscrew the screw. Then I can do is pull this straight up, out, and down, and away it goes. Once you fold this mirror back out, there's two eight millimeter bolts you need to take out of here. So eight millimeter hex head. Hold the mirror. Support the mirror, pull it out, and there's a boot sitting down below there. Pull it out and pull back the cover, press the clip, lift it up, and it slides out like such. While you're in here, you may as well go ahead and remove this one body clip that attaches above the mirror. Just press. You should have something else, pull it out. And there's another bolt right here that we use our five millimeter Allen wrench. Pull it up. Now we're going to remove the body clip and the bolts that supports that panel underneath the fairing on the interior of the motorcycle. We're going to be using this piece here. We're going to take all these body clips and bolts out on both sides. There's another bolt on the inside trailing edge up here that uh, we need to take out as well for this lower panel. We first remove the bolt here, the bolt under here that we remove. Using the five millimeter. Allen wrench, loosen that up and remove it. And the other one is right up here. You can see the series of body clip we have to remove on that side and it will be the same for the other side. And this is just to disconnect from the upper part of the assembly. Now we're going to remove this panel. Mine might be a little different because I have my lights going up through here. It might kind of interfere. But if you haven't taken this off before, you can use a simple tool similar to this one to work around the edges to get these out. I'm going to pull them up so you can feel them in there. And what you're going to do is try to get these out. Work the bottom up and it comes out like such. 
be a little harder for you if you had nothing before. I lubricated my um, the grommets in there to make it easier. But the first time you pull this off, it's going to be very hard. But don't worry, you're not tearing up your motorcycle. Just go ahead and go around with the plastic and move it forward. And what you're trying to do is there's a little lip on the front end of this panel that goes into the hole in the, underneath the light there. So you make sure you align that when you're putting this back on. And this is the area we're trying to get to so we can wire those lights. With the panels off, I can show you these are the grommets I just pulled that away from. Mine had lubricant in it, so it'd be easier for this thing going back on. Just for you to be aware of what you're pulling against, and you're not going to break your motorcycle. Once you get all these um, body clips loose, move this panel, you snap, do the same thing on this side, pull these panels here, that piece coming out there. And for what we're doing, you don't necessarily have to pull this whole thing off. You have body clips that go all the way up. But take the line and pull it out. I had a little difficulty in mind because there's a body clip. This one here that's at the very top. You can only reach from going above. So don't forget to pull that one out. I'm going to do the same thing for the right side. Some have suggested that if you're going to be working in this area, you should take the front fender off. I should have done that, but you don't have to. But um, now we're going to remove this panel underneath the headlight. Once we took away all the uh, body clips away and took the left and right side off, this should be free. There's another body clip on both sides you have to remove before you're taking this panel off. And it's right beneath the headlight where the other panel we took off came in. So press the hole, remove the body clip, and do that on both sides. Front area of portal, portal light onto this panel, which is beneath the headlight. And it goes a little further down and it has a set of vents right there. I'm gonna attach the light right in front of these vents. Then run the wires up through here. To keep from running yet another wire, uh, another panel to get that front panel off, I'm gonna go ahead and wire that light while that panel's on the bike. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. It's good to take this fender off. I might have a few scratches on my fingers. So you may want to take these fenders off, guys. All we can do to reverse, bring down to from here. And we know we need this thing to get to. Down here. See, I feel it. So there. direction I want to run the wire. I'll be pulling up into this area here. So that'll be set for when I'm ready to run that wire from that light. First I'm going to clean this panel off really good with some instant detailing. Just gets nice and clean. And then we're going to finish it up by putting some alcohol in it. Just a minute. And after you got it nice and clean, follow up some if you need your alcohol or any kind of alcohol that will clean this off, make sure there's no wax or anything sticky. And then we'll loosen up your grip on the, uh, the bond from the adhesive for the light. First, run the wire through that vent I was showing you. In the panel, push it up. Grab from the other end, pull it back down till we get to do what we're doing. There, pull it down. Then you can attach it to the pull through. I'm going to use masking tape. You guys can use blue tape or whatever you have. So I'm going to do. Make sure you run through that vent first, or you can pull a separate screw, a hole into that panel, and pull it through. But I'm just using this to make sure it gets through. So we'll just go back and carefully pull it through to the other end. 
Now your light is up where it needs to be. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna attach this. Now that you have your wire pulled through, you're ready to go ahead and install this, this light. And it's gonna be in the center of this panel, as center as you can get it close to that vent. So you go ahead and pull off your, your cover to the adhesive tape. Before you stick it down, you make sure that the wire is through up front. And you're gonna make this as perpendicular as you can get it to the vent holes in the center of that panel. Push it down. Like so. Smooth it out all the way across. Put the wire up through that vent. Make sure everything's good. Just hold it there for a little while. Make sure you're curious for a minute. This is what the light looks like once it's installed. That's it there blending in well with the black color. The only thing you see is the LED light. And the other part of the wire goes in. Don't even notice it. So most folks won't even know it's there until it lights up at night. Due to this project being a continuation of installing your puddle lights, which I hope you already done if you're gonna do this, this connector was attached to the motorcycle. We had to pull it out and run it up here from the puddle lights to here. And all we gotta to do to take that off now is to squeeze the connector right here and the whole thing will pop away, like such. That remains, this comes out. These are the wires we we're looking for right here. As you can see, the wire came out the other end, up near this connector we're gonna hook it up to. So I'm gonna disconnect this from a pull through. There are my wires that we're gonna be working with. I'm going to use DT connectors on these, on this end. So if any mechanic gets in here, they need to take that front panel off. All they have to do is disconnect it. If you've never used DT connectors before, they're a very convenient way to have a waterproof connection. This is what that end looks like. I'm going to put these through here, and then we'll hook the other end to it with this connector. They plug in together. What I do it is first you pull the wire through the waterproof garment. You're gonna attach these pins to this end. Hope you have a good set of crimpers or needling those pliers to do this correctly. Trim it down the best you could. Try to get them as oval as you can. We're going through a hole. That's that one. We do the same thing for the other one. Once you get those on there real good, you're gonna insert them to the holes here. And they got a little opening in there that these things go through. And you'll hear a click when you get it all the way in. You'll be able to see them poking through the other end like such. I was going to do individual taps into this. But since I only have uh, two of them, I won't have enough to do both sides. So what I'm thinking about doing is going further in and doing the double taps into one of these. And that'll lead us to the wire that we need to connect to. Then I can do the same thing for both sides. Also, while you're at it, when you got your DT connectors connected, make sure the orientation is correct. On here, on Honda's, the green wire is actually ground. So that's the ground. Keep that in mind when we're tapping. And the other one is power. So we're gonna make sure that we orient, it, orient these, and hopefully these are oriented correctly too. In this case, I think black with white is power, and solid black is ground. So this will be a hook here. I'm gonna attach this somewhere in here so it can stay in place. And then you will be able to unplug it when needed. 
So right now I'm going to try to get ready to tap into this wire. What I'm going to do now is cut a little slit into these wires cover. Being careful not to cut the wires, I cut myself. Once you got the slit cut, you can pull out the wires just enough that you can access them in a straight line. You cut back a little further back, or pull it back, and pull this out like such. That way I'll be able to take this back up and I've, I've got to tap into these wires. Now I'm going to use one of these connectors. That's what I mean about the double tap. You got positive negatives on one side, and these will be one I tap to on this end. So you look in here and see which way it goes. The one closest to my left comes out here, and the one to the right comes out here. So in this case, since I'm dealing with Ground, I'll know that on this end the ground is going to be closest to me. And the beauty about this, you don't have to do a whole lot of rewiring. All I got to do is insert this over, make sure they're lined up, get it lined up. I'm going to separate them in here. Okay, make sure they go in their separate channels in there. You start pushing down, and you pull this over and crimp it. I'm starting out with my fingers. Don't let me go near those pliers. I'm going to snap this closed. Here, here, snap. It's now closed. So I'll be able to pull this cover back up, put some electrical tape around this. You never know what it was tapped into. Based on my observation of this earlier, the ground wire should be the one on the left. So I'm gonna put this in here. My wires are kind of thick trying to get in there, but got them in. I'm going to separate it for him so you can get them. Get down. Make sure here a click. Now we got to do is hook this up and we can figure out what to put the wires down. Take them in a little bit. Just push that in until it clicks together. Before we do the other side, we're going to check this to make sure it works. Now that we know our light works, we can come in here with some electrical tape and make this sure this is nice and secure. There. Good. What I'm going to do is secure this back. I'm going to find a place to, to, to secure this wire. But we don't want it too snug, so I want the mechanic to be able to, this thing will drop down here, be able to see the plug that can disconnect it. He or she can disconnect it and uh, look on the bike. This I'm going to zip tie to here. That way it'll be associated with that, it won't move, and be able to disconnect this. I'm going to put a zip tie on this connector so I know what it's associated with. The 
this other wire here. Since I don't want it to dangle down down there, I'll just move it to where it won't dangle anywhere. And I might just put another twist zip tie on here just to keep it from dangling. Sure, there's no resistance. The bike. Okay. So, just gonna wrap that up in here. Like such. I probably will put a twist tie there to keep it from moving. We're down with this side. We're gonna wire the right side of the motorcycle similar to the other one. So, for this one, the connector is in a slightly different location. But we don't need to worry about that because this is the wire that leads over to the portal lights. And that's the one we're going to tap into. So we'll just probably go right in the middle of this one to tap into so we can get all the wires back in here. So yeah, we'll put a slip right there on this one. And also, we're going to have to run a wire from here all the way back because the wire that we're running this to is for my rear uh, portal light now. So I'm about to add some wire to that connection to run it further back. So I cut a positive and negative wire. It's gonna be long enough to reach from here all the way back. So, so the thing for us to do is to fish the wires in first and then I can make a connection in here because I already have DT connections back there in the back. So what I'm gonna do on this one is splice directly with this one onto these wires then run it all the way back but I run the wire first and then I put buddy in connectors on here to join it to the wires back there so I run my my guide um, my pull through tool up through this panel and out the other way past the tank I'm going to attach them to this here like such I'm going to ease that wire on through there. Slowly navigate through. And out the end it comes. So I'm going to pull those wires just gently. And these wires I'm going to put down underneath this tank cover that goes on to the back area. So I'm going to deal with this thing later. I can remove my pull through tool and start wiring. There, I got the line tap in. The positive wire is going to go to the right on this one. And um, we'll run the wires through and through. And everything else the same. The only thing on this side you have to be aware of is this cable right here, which goes to this box. Make sure you don't hinder it. So, everything else is the same. And then we're going to tap those wires in back there and the wiring will be done. Now you see I put butt in connectors on here. And now it's time to test it to see if it works. Then I can put everything back together. As we're putting on these lower fairing panels, keep in mind you have to orient it to this little nipple here to an opening in the front of the headlights and right there I'll give you a close up of it that little opening almost in the center of this photograph is what I'm referring to that you must put that nipple into close up of the holes I'm referring to right there at the bottom of the light the hole right there is what I'm talking about So remember, orient the hole, stick it in. The main point is to get this front end straight up. And once you get in the hole, move this cord out of the way. You line this up with the headlight here, and just pull it on back. And match up the pieces together. Remember, 
before you put this this uh, deflector panel on, you have a uh, body clip that goes right in this spot right here. First, you put the body clip in. Call it flush. Press the button. There. Nice and secure. Remember, we had a little fun twisting this panel out. Uh, going in, it's not so hard, but it's kind of odd to deal with. Start out at the top, put these these edges underneath this lip, match it up, and just press that in here at the top, come from the top, and just slowly go down and work this back, this panel back in. You can do some finessing in here. Get this stuff back in. There you go. There. To this end, you have to lift, pull this plastic up a little bit and get these other tabs in. So there. The one thing we have to do now is reinstall the bolts with the 5mm hex head wrench. And then the same thing down here. Set. So what they want to do now is make sure we put the body clip back up there at the top and put the mirror back on. Before you reinstall the mirror, mirror, don't forget to reinstall this body clip right at the top of this thing right here. It's important because once you get the mirror on, you won't have access to it. There, it's on. So the mirror attaches here with the cord and to those two bolts. You match your cord up to your connector. And just push in until it clicks to your thing. Pull this back and make sure. And in this clip, pull the boot back up. Make sure you have good control in the mirror. You push this boot back in here. your boats in. Go ahead and put these two boats back in and you're done with that. And you just push the mirror in like this and you put that panel on beneath there. There's a little trick to getting this panel on. It's not hard but you need to know that. There's a little tab here at the top that you need to hook into the plastic part right up there at the front of this panel. So you get up there and make sure your hook is in. There, slide right over. And now you can put this on. Once you make sure this frame snapped in right there. So once that's snapped in, you can put that boat back in. And then you can open the mirror back out. Putting this inner fairing back on inside is kind of difficult, but I realized what was going on with it. You have to make sure this top tab goes under there first, in, followed by making sure you get these two tabs in, and then you can work from there all the way down and towards the front. So you're gonna start from in there, put the panels in, and work the way this way, then you can put the screws back in. Otherwise, you'll have trouble like I had. Okay, once you put your negative terminal back on your battery, you're ready to put this thing back together again. So make sure you got your seat on good, your bolts in place up there, and then put this on. I got to line this up here. Start lining it up towards the back. And the first thing you need to do actually is put the front edge under the seat like such, and then you move the back part into the slots that's in this back panel. You see the slot in the back of this. Push forward, push in, then make sure you push these rubber guards in place. Snap it right back in place. There you have it. That panel's back on, and you're ready to close this panel, this 
side saddlebag, and everything's good to go. That's good. Now you're ready to enjoy your installation. Here's my rear puddle light. And we light up the back of this bike. I'll show you later when it gets dark. The final result of my install. Flash the lights. The front's lit up. There's the original puddle light. And there's the rear light. Light galore. Seems to be low voltage, but at least I can see further around the bike now. Side back. Another view from a little more distance. So when I jerk that light, jerk the motorcycle, the lights come on, and I can see pretty much everything I need to see on the way up to it. something in the front I'd be able to see. After I was editing this video on this new project, I heard the new 2020 Indian Challenger may come with underbelly puddle lights. So I thought this would be a good time for me to add these red ones to my project here. Thanks for watching.